Brothers and sisters, misses and misters, dented cans and loyal fans. Today, the dented cast is on the air. My name is Dobie Maxwell, flanked by my cohort, Max Bumgardner, in his uh, lovely abode way down, giving me the windshield wipers down in lovely, sunny Florida. Hey, Max. Hey, how are you? It's actually raining today for the first time. It's rained uh, twice here in the Keys since November 28th. Can you believe that? It freaking rains all the time here. Well, I'm surprised I'm not down there enjoying it because if it did, there would be hurricanes and hurricanes <sighs> and lightning and thunder and everything nasty. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's funny. Every, I've been traveling my whole life. Always get the worst weather. So uh, now you got it for a change. You can enjoy it. So you, you're, you're, you're assuming that you, you manifest bad weather. Uh, I don't assume it. I know it. When I, when I go places, you, you won't look at the weather map of the United States of America. There's going to be sunny, beautiful, unseasonably warm temperatures like the Garden of Eden. Perfect conditions, except right. for one little tiny out of the way, funky little town somewhere. There'll be black clouds and, and uh, warnings, hazard mat people, the dead babies floating down the river, erupting volcanoes. That's where I'll be that week. It's always been that way. You ever see the, the Grand Canyon? Did you ever see that? Sure. Yeah. I never have. I've been there three times. Never seen it. It was foggy. I was, I went, I drove there uh, foggy. Couldn't see the grand Canyon. Couldn't see five feet in front of my face. I swear this is true. 10 years to the day later, I was back at the grand Canyon. When I see it again, foggy again, missed it over two. Then uh, just a couple of years ago, I was back out there again. There was a snowstorm, a blizzard. Didn't see it over three. It's a big hole in the ground. I'm never going to see it in my lifetime. I'll look at pictures online. So wow. a true story. Yeah, really true. But anyway, today's episode uh, is not that, not to lament about bad weather. Everybody gets bad weather. Today, we're going to uh, go in the you section of the alphabet. We've got to think of every other word, you, unconditional love. This is hmm. pretty deep, man. This is deeper than the Grand Canyon, bud. Yeah. And uh, you, you made some very good points off air. And I'm going to let you take it because I don't want you to forget that you were on a roll. Well, uh, so many times especially dented cans, feel that love is conditional. So I have to act a certain way or mommy and daddy won't love me. And that is, again, the parents doing the wrong thing. They're not teaching their children how to feel safe emotionally. We've talked about that in many episodes. I'm guilty of that myself. One of my, my own children, adult children, remind me of that constantly, how I did not... Uh, make sure that they felt safe emotionally. So meeting that there was uh, what kind of a mood is dad in, or did he have a stressful day or is he going to be jovial today and happy and loving, or is he going to be stressed out, pissed off and fly into a rage about something that's stupid, which as many people don't care to admit, is very commonplace in a lot of households and, Boy, kids, is it. and kids grow up on pens and needles. Okay. And then those same parents later in life wonder, well, how come I don't have a relationship with my kid? Well, it's because you were an asshole when they were kids. That's why you don't have a relationship. And probably because you've never claimed it once in your life. You've never looked them in the face and said, can I say something to you? I apologize. I am so sorry. I am aware of what I did and how I made you feel as a child. And I claim it 100%. I'm looking into the camera right now. And that goes for my kids. They've already heard it a thousand times, but I want them to hear it a thousand more times. I take full responsibility. My parents have never done that. <clears throat> okay. My dad, especially is what I'm saying. You know, that's, that's, that's never there's always the it's always attached to we did the best we could, which I'm sorry, that's bullshit. You did not do the best you could. Exactly. And you know what else? No one does do the best they can. That's a myth. That's something that you're it's easy for you to let yourself off the hook and say, we did the best we could. Oh, we had it so rough and we were just trying to provide. Maybe shut the hell up. You didn't do a damn bit of good for your kids if you lost your shit with them frequently. That's your responsibility. And that is also exactly what I'm talking about with unconditional love, because when you demonstrate unconditional love and they make a mistake, they don't have to fear making a mistake. They don't have to fear it at all because they know you love them. They recognize they made a mistake and know that you're not going to lose your shit. So anyway, 
Yeah, I, I want to let you in on this too here. Sorry. No, no, no. I think this is the best episode we've ever done. I'm just going to say that what, what you just said, is it sums up everything. If I could hear my father or mother say what you just said one time, it would heal so many scars, right. scabs, open wounds that are still there that make me flinch and cringe to this very minute. Right. And I think we are in the same position. Both of our fathers are dead. Both of our mothers are still alive. We don't have the relationship that we would like. Mine, I haven't talked to my mother in years and years. And if she would have said that, or if your man would have said that, even on his deathbed, boy, I messed up, man. I, it would have really gone the world in healing, but uh, never got it. Yeah. And well, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I think that that's why it's, it's so hard for us to trust. And it's so hard for us to show unconditional love because, as you said, that, that tension. I mean, we used to sit around the kitchen table and just wait for the old man to pop and wonder, who's he going to pop at? I hope it's not me. And for something, like you said, stupid. Somebody spills a little gravy, what, whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but it's right. something that's, you know, all these years later means nothing, less than nothing. And there's usually a beating with it and the, the stress, your whole body tenses up. And it's more than just a one-time thing. It could happen at any time, any place. Usually not in public. Sometimes, but boy, behind closed doors, look out. Both of my parents uh, were slappers or, uh, you know, um, my mom, too. You know, it wasn't like it was just my father. But my father, as the older I got, uh, when he felt like maybe there could be some repercussions, and there were, finally, and he never touched me again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm serious. When you finally have enough of something is when you take care of it. And I took care of it. And he knew very succinctly, never ever touch me again or i'll kill you can i ask you how old you are when that happened i had the same uh, revelation i was 18 years old and uh yeah and it was a story i thought i told the story you did uh, but uh, i'll tell it again real briefly i'm not proud of it uh god rest my dad's soul and and just for the benefit of this and everybody watching all four of you um i forgive my father i truly do that's where doby and i are different i forgive my father you know why? He's dead. You know what else? I refuse to keep bringing back the same thoughts and keep me in my emotional prison. The only way to get out is to turn the key. The key is forgiveness. And if you haven't figured that out, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life, period. So anyway, uh, my father showed up and he was going to uh, teach me a lesson. I don't know if he'd done coke that night. I know he was inebriated, uh, way, way drunk. <clears throat> and he wheels up in front of my mother's house and my mother's standing there. My brother, who I'm eight years older than, um, I am 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets out of the car and puts his keys around his finger. He goes, come here, punk. I'm going to scar that pretty boy face. So you remember this. That's all he had to say. I went at him like an NFL linebacker, picked him up off the ground and slammed his ass on the cement street and put my hand around his neck, his esophagus. And I said, if you move, I will kill you right now. And I am not lying. The police showed up and they asked him as he was getting up off the ground. They said, hey, are you, Mr. Bumgarner, would you like to press charges? And <coughs> No, it's OK. I forgive him. Yeah, you forgive me. You know, and, and here's the deal, man. None of that's none of that's OK. None of that is OK. It's never OK to hit your kid. It's never OK to hit your kid. And if you have done that, you need to claim it even today. Even if your kid's 50 years old and say, I was wrong. Stop with the we did the best we could bullshit and take responsibility for your own damn actions. You know, the, you know, because that, that that's so far away from unconditional love, unconditional love is something like Doby, we talked off the air, like a pet gives you unconditional love, right? A pet gives you, you can be mean to a pet and the pet will still love you when you walk in the door and want to, want to just, just lick you and be near you and look at you with those loving eyes. And they can't, the pet can't get enough of you. A dog, not a cat, a cat will Cat will doesn't care. But, Give you the paw wipers. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but a dog <laughs> specifically, right? So I mean, isn't that what you're talking about with with pets? Well, we went in a, be a much better direction with your uh, with your rant, and I agree with every word of it wholeheartedly. Did you have pets as a kid? Let me ask you that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I still have some guilt about that. When, when we lived together, my dad, his idea of a pet was to keep a dog on the end of a chain, you know, and it's not that my dad was a stupid man. He was just unaware and un- uneducated and he was not willing to go beyond and punch through his own awareness to see if there was something more. So that dog lived its life. Its name was Snoopy. Coincidentally, Snoopy lived his entire life on the end of a chain, sometime without water. The chain would get kinked up. So, you know, just imagine six, six feet of chain, you know, so, three feet. Yeah. Well, I mean, just it, horrible, horrible existence. You know, again, awareness of what we did the best we could. No, you did. Well, here's the thing. Uh, it's amazing how parallel uh, you, your father and mine are. Same thing with Russ. He was a biker and rode at the outlaws. And the outlaws had big dogs, usually a Doberman pincher, that they would chain to either their bike or a tree near their bike or a street sign, and they'd feed it acid, LSD, so the dog would go absolutely nuts. If anybody came near their bike, they would get attacked. And that's the memories I have. I, to this day, I'm afraid of big dogs because I got bitten in several places, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the old man didn't realize it used to beat the dog. You know, we'd leave for a couple of days to go somewhere and come back. Well, the dog crapped on the carpet. What's it supposed to do? Use the toilet, read the paper, you know? Yeah. It's going to crap on the carpet. So uh, I I wasn't into pets until later in life when I had become open to dogs and cats and parakeets. The only pet I ever had as a kid was a turtle, a little tiny little turtle. I was raised by my grandparents. They didn't want to clean up any shit. They didn't want to have any pets. So I got a little turtle. They're illegal now because apparently they spread disease. Maybe they started COVID back in the 70s. I have no idea. Good so my, our turtle, Herman, ran away. That's what I was told when I was eight. The turtle ran away. You know, okay, I think my grandpa flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> Enough of this turtle shit. We're done. I, I mean, you should be able to catch it. It's a turtle. But anyway. That's the thing. It, yeah. It's running like, like your <laughs> $6 million man if you're old enough to remember that show in slow motion or football highlights. So I, I'm just thinking, I really have opened up to animals now and been able to enjoy that unconditional love. And it really is, I want to say, addictive. I find myself, if I see a dog, you know, walking down the street or parking a car in a parking lot, I can't help but give it attention. I used to make fun of that little doggy boy. Who come here, little booty, 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 booty. Now I find myself doing it and I like it and I'm not ashamed of it. And I think dented cans have a hard time opening up, as we both talked about many times other than this episode. And uh, animals is a great example how to show unconditional love. That's my whole point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, animals are sometimes grandparents are sometimes grandparents are. You know what, Dobie? I know. I know, buddy, that you resent being raised by your grandparents. But we've talked about this before. Thank God your grandparents were there to raise you. What a gift that was to you and from them, you know, because they could have easily said not our problem. And you could have been sent down the river. You know, literally that was, that was Gramps. Grandma still have some issues there, but uh, she was she did open up at the end. Right. And you said uh, you got to live. I don't want to make you emotional, but you said that toward the end, when all the walls came down, you saw her beautiful soul for the first time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's almost like like Hitler, you know, sat down, put his arm around you saying, you know, I, I wasn't you know, I, I didn't mean all that. And right. she was cold and German and, and mean and nasty. And just she's only five, two or three or whatever mm-hmm. she was. But as a little boy, she was Hitler. She was she was the whole Nazi army beatings and nasty and no love and no warmth. But to be able to see that face down and the, the, the niceness there, that is something that I'll take to my grave in a good way. So hopefully somebody watching this, you know, the, the who gives a shit test for our listeners, which our radio boss always talked to us about. Uh, who in your life, maybe that's still alive, that you could have a, a, I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm not saying, I mean, maybe if you approach that person, you haven't talked, I didn't talk to my grandma nine years before we started. And then we had about two or three years at the end of her life. What was absolutely magnificent, spectacular, beyond my wildest dreams. Not everybody's going to have that. I, yeah. just, I throw it out there because I hope somebody watching one of the four will take that chance and, and get the reward like I did. Well, I don't think that it's hard to show unconditional love. And I'm just now getting to the point. Uh, like I said, I have, uh, I do have a relationship with both of my kids. One of them, uh, is carrying a lot of resentment and justifiably. So quite frankly, justifiably. So, um, that I I've told both of my kids and I mean this still to this day, there is nothing they could ever do. I mean, nothing they could ever do to make me stop caring or stop loving them. 
nothing. And if you're taught that when you are just a little bitty kid, that is something you can build on in your soul. You can know that no matter what, I will be loved by my parents. That's why a lot of people uh, lean on religion. You know, no matter what, Jesus loves me. No matter what, God loves me. You know, that a lot of people in the world, billions of people in the world have that in their mind. Okay. I don't know that they live like that. I don't know that they, they, uh, they live like they're supposed to live according to their belief system. <laughs> but, yeah. I know th- but I know that a, p- a lot of people definitely have experienced or, or are aware of that fact. Well, what would you say to somebody like us that did not experience it and is struggling with it? I commend you for overcoming it. I still have a ways to go, but I'm overcoming a lot of it too. What would you advice would you have for someone looking at this saying, man, I just, I have bad memories and I can't let it go. Hard to do, man. Well, it is hard to do. uh, And if I had the answer, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you on a uh, Zoom podcast that four people will look at. Uh, <laughs> I'd, well, I'd that'll, be, that'll multiply. Yeah. If they tell four, it will be and 16. they tell four, and they tell four, it'll be, yeah. it'll be 16. <laughs> and someday, 64. Uh, oh you know, so... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> what got into you today? You're the funniest I've ever seen you in 15 well, years. You, you, you know, have be caffeinated, you have a good breakfast. That rain in Florida is doing you good, man. Well, I'm impressed. You, you know, sometimes what we do is we, we tape this at the end of the day, right? So this mm-hmm. is not the end of the day when we're taping. Maybe we just found the secret to why... <laughs> what we should be doing. Um, you asked, so the question is, how do you get over it? Uh, this is not going to be, this is not going to be palatable. Uh, this is not going to land well in somebody's mind. I can tell you that how I do it. And this is absolutely true. I keep pointing back to that book awareness by Anthony DeMello. And that has that single book written in the 80s, has changed my life. I still read a chapter of that book every day as part of my orbit, you know, uh, what I do in the morning. I'll tell you what, man, one of the key points in that book is when you stop needing other people, stop needing other people, that's when you're able to just put it down, you know? For instance, if somebody says to you, hey, Dobie, that's a nice Milwaukee Brewers hat from the 70s. I really like that, you know, and you attach yourself to that, you know, that that means they're pushing a button and you go up a little bit. They say, hey, Dobie, that's a really ugly hat. Did you get that at a thrift store? Are you that cheap? Well, that that pushes your button and you go down the other way and you want to go. You're ready to go, you know. And so when you lose that attachment. And you truly lose that attachment. I'm closer now than I have ever been in my lifetime to just laughing shit off and looking at people going, oh, my gosh, you're an ass. I'm an ass. We're both asses. To assume anything else is stupid. It's just stupid. No one in this world has it all figured out, man. And that's been the key for me. So to try to live to someone else's standards, whether they're blood or not, is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So if we're together and we can both feel comfortable and we can both feel love, that's the best we can hope for. Otherwise, if we're caught in our expectations and he did this and she did this and they said this, and then we're always going to be feel like shit. So the answer to your question is detach detached. I don't give a shit what they think. I really, truly don't. Even people who love me, I could care less what they think at this point. I'm not kidding. Where did you get that shirt? Was the circus in town? Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, yeah. No, I so, mean it. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. So, yeah. And shield wipers. Yeah, right. right. No, it's, it's really true. I mean, we joke about it, but I think a lot of times there's places to laugh about stuff like this. And I like our show because it's no bullshit and it's unedited and everybody doesn't have to agree with it. And if four or 40,000 or 4 million people watch it, I got to believe we're breaking through that, that layer, that outside layer of, Hey, well, how's it, how's everybody doing? Oh, just okay. You talk to somebody, how are you? I'm fine. Nobody's fine. Everybody's no. dented. No, everybody's it, hurting. Everybody's I was, screwed. I was just watching a, uh, 
Jordan Peterson. I love Jordan. I was watching a talk with him and Sam Harris, and they they, they do events sometimes. And one of the t- one of the topics they got on was the I versus me. So there is an I. Tony DeMello talks about this too in his book Awareness. And then there's a me. Well, the me is connected to the world, so you need everybody's approval. But that doesn't change the I. So you know, it's I won't go too deep into it because I don't want you to glaze over. Maybe you already have, <laughs> but the the point is is. You know, Eckhart Tolle talks about it too. When you, when you, uh, when you uh, can't separate the two, when you identify with all of your pain, that's bad. That's bad. So, because you're not your thoughts, you're not your pain, you're not your problems, you are actually separate from that. So, what the hell are we? Those are events, those are things that, that happened to us, but that's not us. We are separate from that. If you're able to, like you struggle with, uh, maybe it's bipolar disorder. You used to more than you do now. Like you've said, I'm not putting, you know, that's, that's something you've said. Um, or, you know, you, you can tell the wormy side of the apples coming and you, you batten down the hatches and get prepared. Right. Okay. Uh If you are able to ever to say, uh, here comes, I, I can tell I'm going to get depressed again because everybody does. Everyone does. Okay. And then look at it like it's clouds in the sky passing, passing by and not attach yourself to it, but just let it be like a, a dark cloud passing by and, and just experience it. So are you still depressed? Yeah, but you don't attach yourself to it. So you don't, you don't say, my life sucks. It's always sucked. I'm broke. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm unemployable. All of those. You just mentioned my something. dating profile. <laughs> but, but if you're able to detach yourself and for the first time I am, cause I'm not my mistakes. I would be my mistakes if I kept doing them now that I'm aware of how much damage that I caused different people at different points in my life. Okay. That'd be a different, like throwing, uh, paint in the air. The air is not affected. You can't paint the air. Okay. The mm-hmm. paint lands on the ground. Okay. But the air is not affected. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. You would be, you know, you, the eye would be the air. So you're, you're choosing to be affected is what I'm, that's the whole point of this. You're, ch- you're choosing to be affected by your thoughts rather than choosing your thoughts and replacing your thoughts with better thoughts. And that's the, that's the real goal that everybody, that everybody has struggled with or struggles with, you know, that's the, that's the thing they struggle the most with. So. Buddy, this is the best episode by far we have ever done. And I want to say that uh, I was the problem. You took this one by charge. It's like, I, you're Batman. I'm Robin. I'm going to get out of the Batmobile and let you flow, buddy, because you're on a, I'm going to call you butter because you're on a roll. Yeah. Well, this as soon dirty. as I can get rid of you, then I can focus on me. Well, <laughs> that won't be hard to do. I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm putting in my two weeks. <laughs> well, actually, actually, uh, your birthday's coming up um, March 14th. And please, if you need to, I'll put Dobie's. Uh, PO, can I put your PO box in the? Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay, I'll put Dobie's uh, address in the PO box. He does like to get mail and uh, any kind of mail. It could be a postcard, like Max sent with yeah. a, a two two fat people on the saying. Well, I don't know what it said, but it made me laugh. Good. Was, <laughs> snail mail is good, buddy. This is all good, and if, whether anybody listens or not, and I know eventually that more people will. This stuff needs to be spoken out loud between two people who aren't going to argue and scream like our parents did. Yeah. I know you and I sometimes get disappointed. Well, the world's not watching it like a Kardashian, you know, roast or wedding, but uh, we were in the trenches with we're the, the people we're the people's champion, man. Yeah. Well, and please um, comment, like share, subscribe. Uh, you need to do it quick. Cause we're going to, the show's going to go on a hiatus here <laughs> very soon. And by the way, Dobie, please go ahead and announce your, uh, project here for the three or four people that, that see this. Well, I'm going to announce it there too. It's a, it's a diabetic themed podcast called just my type. 
and uh, it is fantastic. There's a company behind it with with money and and a PR team and an art. We needed a logo. We had three artists to work on it. Well, you and I and you, I got to thank you for doing all the production work on this. It's a different experience, and it can be found justmytypepodcast.com. And I will learn from that just as you have learned from this and you're learning in your own business. This is not done yet. I know we're talking about taking a hiatus. That could be a week, a month, a year, 10 years. Doesn't matter. This topic of dented can is never going to go away. And even I'm so proud of that we did 100 episodes like we did. And some of it was better than others. And it was rough ride sometimes. But man, to, if it's today, we're at our peak today, but we can't quit now. You're on a roll, man. <laughs> well, I, I had a lot of mushroom coffee this morning, so maybe that's what it psychedelic, is. Psychedelic, psychedelic mushroom no, coffee. Four Sigma, four Sigmatic. But this is, so. it, it's been almost a year since we did this. And, you know, we started from zero and we, we plowed through, made it happen. And uh, the progress that you have made as a human being is spectacular and miraculous. And I look at you as an inspiration. Hopefully, maybe even if you look at me as an inspiration of what not to do, we're, we're helping each other. We're propping each other up. I'm proud of you, man. I love you. I love this project. And uh, the world's not so miserable because I have someone else to discuss it with who gets it. And whoever listens to this and watches this, we get it. You're not alone. You're not alone in your in your wallow of shit, which, you know, you're just not. So right. welcome. We're glad you're here. So how to show somebody else unconditional love, mm -hmm. I believe, is... When you offer love freely, expecting nothing in return, nothing in return, that's unconditional love. So, do you, do you think, and I've been trying to do this more and more, just opening the door for people? Are we really going out of my way to do it? I don't care who it is, race, creed, age, nothing. And I just say, I hope you have a great day. Something in the moment. I really like that psychedelic pair of pants you're wearing, whatever it is. And, and just try, try to get, to me, that's an example of it. And it's, it's work wonders. I, you know, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a great place to start. I really do think so. But some of the people that are hurting the most are the hardest to love. And they're the ones, you know, to, yeah. we've, we've both been accused of, of being that person, like impossible to love. You know, you had some reconciliation in your own family with your own siblings uh, after a long, long distance, I think of 20 years. Decades. So, yeah. 20 for my sister. Yeah. And then yeah. now uh, there's some reconciliation. And, and you said that, that that filled a hole in your soul. Oh, it yeah. Just, uh, and, and you would you can't imagine life without her now at this point in your life. No. And we, we had some Christmases and, and Thanksgivings yeah. and just times to just sit together and heal and it's night and day difference. I, maybe five years, however long it's been. Yeah. So I, I hold out that hope for all of us that if someone is still living that you had issues with and clashed and grinded the gears with, mm -hmm. that you can get together. And it won't always work. I mean, one my, my I got a half brother that, you know, that was probably 30 years and he hates me because we did this show. He, he just you know, cut cut it off. He cut it off again. It's like, well, I don't hate you. I don't, I don't leave the door open. Leave the door open for, for him, you know, yeah. leave the door open for him. I know you, I know you do. So I know you. Leave and just, open. and just like your, your, your child that you're talking about, you know, this mm -hmm. person is an, an adult now as both your children are mm -hmm. and uh, adults evolve. You and yeah. I evolved. Yeah. Well, so the, doors my, open, man. my, uh, I always tell my kids that I always tell my kids that even when they're, if they're telling me off, I want them to get it out. I really do wanted to get them out. I wanted to, I, I want them to get it out of their system. So here's the big, big secret to all of this, to unlocking the combination. You have to love yourself unconditionally as well. You have to. And I'd like you to tune in for Dobie's Valentine's Day mini episode, uh, because that will, uh, that will give you something. I believe that's coming up tomorrow, right? Uh, no, we got a little, uh, yeah, it is coming tomorrow. And the, the thing is, I have a Cupid suit, you know, a little arrow, bow and arrow that I wear. So it, it costs props and costs, no, joke. I'm not wearing anything. Okay. That's fantastic. That's, that, I, I don't know if I can do unconditional love with that. So I hope you're not eating. I, I have shaved. <laughs> I have manscaped. <laughs> 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 
Woo. Okay. You that's can't a, follow that, buddy. That's uh, it. That, that's yeah. We'll, we'll even, go ahead. Joel, even Joel Osteen would give me the finger if you saw that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, oh, I love Joel. Good old, All right. good old J-O. Yeah, love Buddy, you too. Buddy, I love yeah. you too, man. This is a uh, uh, rocket fuel on your. I enjoy this episode as a listener, and I was part of it. Just remember to love yourself unconditionally, and, and try to show, especially kids, unconditional oh, yeah. love. Especially kids, and let them know that there's nothing they could ever do that would take away your love and admiration for them. And even if it's not your kids, yeah, there's kids everywhere. Right. Make them feel, make them feel special. Make them feel like they have a network of support. Exactly. You see that, that little, that little flash in their eyes, man. Yeah. It's all worth it. So, it is, man. All right. We, we're the dented cast. Windshield wipers to max. <laughs> Love to all of you.